Hi there, I am Gurvinder Singh and this talk is about a very common topic that all of us routinely encounter in our practice of trauma as well as certain other fields of medicine. We are discussing Glasgow Coma Scale and this is a scoring system that is used to assess the neurological status. This discussion will describe what GCS is and what are what was the need of such a scoring system. Next we will see how it is assessed in a patient. As is common, improvements are added to the original to make it better. After hinting about these modifications, we shall discuss the purported shortcomings and the topic will conclude with a hint about the references. Imagine having to communicate over the phone to your colleague about the neurological status of a person with head injury. How can you precisely tell her how is the level of consciousness of this particular patient? It may sound perplexing, but this is the exact issue that Teasdale and Janet addressed in 1974 by proposing the scale we now know as Glasgow Coma Scale. Initially, the focus of this scale was to assess the level of consciousness in persons with acute brain injury and in comatose patients. However, subsequently this scoring system has been expanded to various non-traumatic conditions also. The scale is very simple way to assess the level of consciousness. We basically record three components on a scale and these three components are the best verbal response, best eye response and the best motor response. Let's just briefly discuss what are the steps to record the Glasgow Coma Scale. The first step is to check for any conditions that may impair response of a patient. We need to ensure that there is no any periorbital injury that may interfere with eye opening. There is no any tracheal tube, be it endotracheal or tracheostomy, since these would not allow phonation. We also need to know if there is any limb injury that may involve fractures. Such conditions would hamper free movement in response to command or pain. We also need to check if patient is being ventilated mechanically and has muscular paralysis medications administered. Next we need to observe the patient. We see if he is awake or lying with the eyes shut. We may observe if there is any tracheostomy. Such observations help in making accurate assessment. Next we stimulate to see the patient's response. It is these responses to stimuli that are recorded. Even though it may sound complicated, it is pretty much possible to finish one set of recording in less than a minute in an average patient. Let's discuss each of the top, uh, each of the headings in detail. The first and the simplest is about the eye opening. We need to know whether and the maximum score in this category is 4 and the minimum score is 1. Most all of these categories have minimum score of 1 and the maximum score varies. For eye opening, the maximum score is 4 and we assign a score of 4 if the person is able to spontaneously open the eyes like he is lying in the bed and watching around with his eyes blinking on regular intervals and he is looking here and there. This is spontaneous eye opening. We call it a score of 3 in eye opening category if he opens eyes in response to sound but then again tends to drift back to say uh, sleepy sort of condition or he tends to doze off but if you again call his name or you don't talk to him he again opens up the eyes so this is he is having a score of e3 e2 is in response to pressure or painful stimulus we may press on his nail bed and see if he opens his eyes or not this is a bit of nociceptive stimulus which we are offering him and in response to the pressure or pain if he opens the eyes then we assign a score of E2 and score of E1 is that they, if there is no any spontaneous or provoked eye opening the person is having his eyes closed and is not opening eyes in response to any stimulus or even verbal commands or spontaneously and we assign a score of E and T if eyes are not testable. So, in category of eye opening, the maximum score is 4, the minimum score is 1 and in between the score 2 is if person is opening eyes in response to a painful stimulus 
and E3 is if he is opening eyes in response to a sound. Awakening a patient who is asleep is not E3 but E4 because sleep is a normal physiological process. If a person is sleeping and we wake him up, then we don't say that we are having him eye opening eyes in response to sound. It is spontaneous eye opening and after that he will be able to engage in a meaningful conversation and he will not be able to, he will not be drifting back to sleep. So that becomes E4 not E3. Now when we talk about the verbal response, the maximum score in this category is 5 and V5 means oriented, oriented to time, place and person. You can ask him a simple question, who are you, where are you and what time of the day is it or which month of the year is it. If he is able to answer these questions in a coherent manner and in a proper manner then he is oriented to time, place and person. If he misses something like he misses the month of the year or if he confuses forenoon for the morning or evening or stuff like that, it means he has some orientation but he is partly confused. So that will make it V4. If he is not having either of these two and he is just able to make words like morning or he speaks about some particular word words not sounds words which are proper words but which are not properly joined together to form sentences then it becomes v3 v2 is about making sounds like you know moaning groaning those sort of sounds and we assign a score of one if none of phonation is present so when we talk about verbal response v1 is no verbal response no phonation v5 is completely oriented speech which is about time place and person v4 is confused speech three is words two are sounds and one is none response so it's if we look at it in a graded manner it's very simple to remember it even and like in i category the last is nt when verbal response is not testable we'll see that in a short while when it cannot it may not be testable now we will talk about the motor response. Motor response is the ability of a person to obey commands or response to noxious stimuli. The maximum score in this category is 6 and the minimum as usual is 1. We call it M6 if he is able to obey commands. Remember we have to test the best possible limb, one which is not injured, not paralyzed and not restrained and we ask him to move that limb and if he is able to execute that movement it means he is able to obey commands. If person has got injuries to the limbs and we cannot ask him to move the limb or it is not possible to move the limb then we may ask him to just show his tongue if he is able to open the mouth and protrude tongue then it will be construed as M6 and we would say that he is able to obey the commands. Next if he is not able to obey commands what we will do we will Try to give him a noxious stimulus and see what is his response. If he is able to localize that painful stimulus, which may be pressure on the supraorbital rim or it may be trapezius, uh, trapezius pinch or it may be pressing on the fingernails, these all are painful stimuli. If he is able to localize the painful stimulus, that constitutes M5. M4 is the normal flexion withdrawal response. Now when we say withdrawal response we mean that patient is able to move away from the painful stimulus. Withdrawal. Withdrawal is moving away from the painful stimulus. It should not be confused with M3 which is abnormal flexion. Patient is flexing but he is not moving away from the painful stimulus. This is probably the only area where the confusion arises. What is the difference between M4 and M3? M4 is when the person is able to meaningfully move away from the painful stimulus. Let's say we give him a pinch onto the medial aspect or closer to the sagittal plane and he moves away from it and goes abducts his arm and that will be he's moving away from the painful stimulus which is M4. Ab abnormal flexion will be he's flex just flexing the joints. 
which may even be bringing him close to the painful stimulus, which is worse than M4. And M2 is extensor response. We gave him painful stimulus, he extends the limb in response to that. So, in a way, he goes closer to the painful stimulus rather than moving away from it. M1 is no response to painful stimulus and as usual, NT is not testable. To sum it up again or to summarize, motor response is graded from M1 to M6 with M6 being ability to obey commands and M1 being no response to painful stimulus. M5 is lesser than obeying commands and he is able to localize the painful stimulus. Let's say we give him a trapezius punch, he moves his opposite hand and tends to push away the, pain, uh, the stimulating hand that is M5. M4 is normal flexion which is withdrawal from the painful stimulus moving away from the painful stimulus. M3 is abnormal flexion and M2 is the extensor response in when we give him a painful stimulus and M1 is no response to painful stimulus. Now what are the conditions when the particular head may not be recordable or may not be testable? So far as eye response is concerned, it may not be possible to elicit eye responses in persons who have got facial injuries and those injuries have resulted in swelling in the periorbital region and so we cannot assess or ask patient to open the eyes because it is physically not possible to open the eyes. Similarly, for verbal response, a person who is on tracheostomy or on endotracheal intubation will not be able to phonate even if he is on spontaneous ventilation. Since we have bypassed the vocal cord mechanism and so he is not able to phonate. We cannot test verbal response in these patients. Motor response may not be testable if the limb is paralyzed, if it is an injured limb which has got fractures which is painful to move and so the patient will not move that limb. Moreover, patients who are on paralytic agents like for ventilatory purposes, they would also not be able to move the limbs. So we cannot test motor component in these persons. Now, after having tested these three particular sets, we need to arrive at a final score. So, we will have a value for E varying from 1 to 4. We will have a value for V which will vary from 1 to 5. And we will have a value for M or motor response which will vary from 1 to 6. Combining these three components will give us a minimum score of 3 or a maximum score of 15. So, this is the single numerical digit which will represent what the Glasgow Coma, Glasgow Coma Scale score is. It's a brief way of representing GCS when we enumerate the number from 3 to 15. The better way is to tell about each component like you know we may say E4, V5, M6 which again becomes 15 or we can say E1, V1, M1 when it is 3. This gives more information about the patient than a numerical digit of 3 or 15. Of course, 3 and 15 will always mean E1, V1, M1 and uh, E4, V5, M6 but there may be conditions on the way like a score of 9 will be because of E3, V3, M3 and many other combinations also. If one particular component is not testable, we have to write E, N, T plus V3 plus M4 which is a score of 7 plus I is not testable. Score of 8 or less is suggestive of severe head injury. As we go closer to score of 15, the gradient of injury becomes less and less and at E4, V5, M6, we can say the person does not have significant head injury. Let's now briefly discuss about the modifications. In fact, the present scale that is used is actually a modified scale only because that difference between M4 and M3, it was introduced subsequently. So originally the Glasgow Coma Scale score had a score total score of 14 which was subsequently expanded to 15 by adding abnormal flexor response in response to painful stimulus. Now we also need to modify Glasgow Coma Scale for periodic patients because they may not be able to engage in meaningful conversation and may not be able to follow the motor response in the same way as in adults. Eye opening essentially remains the same. It is marked in the same way and as in the case of adults. But when we talk about verbal response, we call it V5 
if the child is smiling and he orients to sound it becomes v4 if he is cries but is consolable we can divert his attention he will be distracted and he'll stop crying then it becomes v4 v3 is when he is moaning and he is not particularly attentive to the sound which is all around him and v2 is when he is inconsolable and agitated whatever we do we are not able to make him quiet even for a moment that is v2 and v1 is when there is no any verbal response from the kid for motor response there is also modification of the scale we call it m6 if there are spontaneous purposeful movements it's called m5 when the child withdraws from the touch and withdrawal from pain is taken as m4 m3 is abnormal flexion to pain m2 is extension to pain and m1 is no motor response this modification of glasgow coma scale for young children or pediatric patients is also called adelaide scale what are the limitations of glasgow coma scales one thing is when we talk about traumatic brain injury one of the very important prognostic indicators or even for that matter for the assessment of head injury is the pupillary size and the reaction of pupils to light unfortunately glasgow coma scale does not include pupillary size or reaction of pupils to light in its assessment so they need to be assessed separately moreover for brain stem and injuries to medial longitudinal fasciculus and about the coordination between the various nuclei in the cranial nerves there is another uh, component called dolls eye movement which is not taken into account additionally when there are concomitant injuries which need tracheostomy or there are facial injuries the person is quadriplegic or paraplegic or he has been put on paraly paralyzing agents for ventilatory purposes it's usually not possible to fully implement the glasgow coma scale and whatever score we get is not as nice as it would have been otherwise so in these persons who are critically sick the glasgow coma scale score may not be applicable because of other limiting factors this is in brief about glasgow coma scale and we can further get very nice information about it from their official website at glasgowcomascale.org this site has been developed for commemoration of 40 years of glasgow coma glasgow coma scale score in practice it has got very lucid description and a nice video about how to assess and uh, ascertain the glasgow coma scale score it has got a beautiful questionnaire which one can undergo to know or assess one's understanding of the subject and it has got references to original papers also apart from that sebastian's textbook of surgery and wikipedia also provide lot of good information on the topic this talk is part of an endeavor to present medicine in an easy format for anyone who may be interested it is an ongoing journey and not the destination please feel free to point out any inaccuracies or suggestions so that we could do a better job you may email to us at info@admedonline.com at other such videos are listed on the website admedonline.com which is not which is a not for profit venture thanks for viewing